Hi, I'm Roshana Baldwin, a journalist, a Chicagoan, and a millennial bringing light to everyday stories that matter. I share the type of stories that mainstream media ignores or gets wrong. The news of the neighborhoods, the news that matters. Here is someone you need to know. Meet Harry Lennox. Harry Lennox, how are you? Well, I'm doing great, Rashad. Great, great to be talking to you, and uh, and and congratulations! You got you you're you're doing a great job with your community outreach, your your show here. I'm glad you know. Thank you, thank you. You're doing great work. I mean, your resume is impressive. Most importantly, you have two major projects that I came across on my own. One, we know your film is coming out December 10th, Trouble Waters. We're going to talk about that, but the African-American Museum of Performing Arts. Why now? Why the South Side of Chicago? Tell us about that. How is it going to help the South Side of Chicago? Well, you know, it's a very interesting, uh, I think it's, a, it's, a, it's a, that packs a wallop as a question, but, uh, you know, um, uh, so I hope you don't mind me taking a, a little stretch here with it. No. But the, uh, yeah, African-American Museum for the Performing Arts, why now? Why the South Side of Chicago? Why here or there, as it were? I'm in New York at the moment, but, and why now? And I think that some things uh, are ideas that have come across too late. This is, this is, I'm late to the game. You know, somebody should have thought it, I wish somebody would have, uh, it should be a hundred years old at this point, you know, quite honestly. The collective contributions of the performing arts uh, as, as constructed, by the originators of it in, in any kind of indigenous way. There are only very few uh, art forms that were created here in the United States. Uh, there's a duck decoy that the Native Americans created, uh, which was very, very useful. That's considered art, uh, by the way, culture as it were. And then of course, black music, black dance, black uh, expressions and, 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 and that kind of thing. So insofar as it's practiced, and, and, and I'm actually a person who thinks that uh, there was a time in history in the, late ninth, in the late 18th century and early 19th century, there was a company called the African Grove Theater, and it was here in New York in the, in the village, and they used to do Shakespeare there, and the uh, white cops burned down the building, arrested them, and made them promise never to do Shakespeare again. And, uh, and I think for a time, the reason I bring that up is because um, I think they were the only um, uh, American native people doing Shakespeare of any note in the United States. All the rest of them were like British imports up to that time. Later, there was a guy by the name of, uh, of uh, Edwin Forrest, who was the American sort of, you know, master of it, if you will, of Shakespeare at least. But these were the people who loved the language of the theater, loved Shakespeare in particular. And, and because they couldn't, they weren't being invited by other companies, they formed their own and it was burned uh, down. Uh, and so, you know, obviously there, there are theater companies and all of these things now, but only eight companies uh, of color, of black companies, BIPOC, if, as people are saying, have their own buildings in the United States. Probably two of them are right there in Chicago. My friend Jackie Taylor's uh, Black Ensemble Theater, and of course ETA. Mm -hmm. Black Ensemble is on the south, on, on the north side of Chicago. ETA is, you know, God bless them. You know, it's been around a long time, but that's way down south. We want to bring back to Bronzeville, really the home of the the center of the unit, the epicenter, really, of Black culture uh, for the country. Uh, if that's not superfluous, uh, is, is that area of, of Chicago. And so what better place to do it? Um, I would love for people to be able to see quality entertainment, the best that we have to offer, rather than having to go to the Airy Crown and seeing, you know, things that come and hit for a night or two, you know, to have a viable state-of-the-art theater uh, or performance space, really, uh, with two smaller, you know, with two mid-sized theaters, one mid-sized and one small, 
a home base for already existing institutions, such as Congo Square, such as a number of impact theater, any number of theaters that do not have a home right now. And then when they do wish to perform, uh, then you know they have to go to places that they cannot fill because those venues are too big. Uh, in some cases, they may be too small. You know, so we want to be the we want to be the uh, the baby bear uh, of culture. You know, in in the city, and and we think that people should be able to stay right in their neighborhoods and have the world come to them. So my real long term goal is is, is to have a kind of cultural exchange with the other theater companies across the country and uh, and we can send stuff to them and they can send stuff to us. And so now is the time. As I say, it should have been a, a million years ago, really a hundred years ago at least. It did, uh, it, and, uh, and what better place uh, than, you know, right, right, right where it was born in many ways. The South Side, absolutely, it's needed. Uh, you're adding to the revitalization of Bronzeville what can we expect from the museum itself? What type of exhibits, installations? Is it interactive? It's, an arc, what's, it's the archive. What will we see? You know, it's an interesting thing. Uh, I, I'm, I'm excited about it. It was my, my idea before the, the performance art space to actually do a museum where we can have that collective history. That story I told you about the African Grove Theater, for example. Uh, all of the theaters that came out of uh, you know, the workers program, uh, the WPA and so forth, uh, with, with uh, Roosevelt, uh, all of the stuff that came out of the black arts movement in the 60s, uh, which really really was started by Mary Baraka in Harlem, but had residences throughout uh, the country. Uh, there was a bunch of, of theaters that came into being around that time in the late 60s, early 70s. Uh, Kawumba, of course, uh, ETA, um, Black Ensemble was, you know, J Jackie was just a, a wee little girl at the time, but of course, you know, was inspired by it and uh, what was happening with the Black Arts Movement. My friends here in New York have a group uh, at the Billy Holiday Theater, mm -hmm. um, which they actually do a, a course in the Black Arts Movement. And I've, I've had the, you know, the, the pleasure of, of actually teaching there and so forth uh, for periods of time. But I think that, that, um, what we can see in the museum is that collective history. Where can you find out about the African Grove? Where can you find out about Kawumba? Chocolate Chips, the Chicago Theater Company, where I really got my start. Um, any number of other, of other theaters that are based in Chicago or had a life in Chicago for a while that are currently there. Where could we go collectively to see uh, any play that has been archived throughout the country since those, these things have been archived for decades now, generations now. If you want to see, you know, what, for example, the, the 2003 Jitney production was like, find out the information about it, read the books about it, experience virtual tours with it. We really want, you know, we want at some point to have a hologram like they do at the Holocaust Museum, a first person point of view where you can actually talk to somebody who may not even physically be alive anymore, but you would be able to conduct as a, like a living museum, you'd be able to actually have a conversation with, uh, we originally wanted to do it with our friend, the great Anthony Chisholm, mm -hmm. who passed away a couple of months ago, uh, where you could actually have this interaction with him. So for young people, what it would be like to walk in the shoes of, to look at the line, look at the acting notes, you know, we get our scripts or what have you. I, I use uh, an iPad now to read my scripts, but you know, look at the notes that they made, the, the books, the literature has been written on the movies of Black history. You know, there's um, there, there's a lot of people with a great amount of expertise in Chicago. Uh, I think actually Dr. Lonnie Bunch uh, may even be from Chicago. You know, the guy who's uh, uh, in charge now of the National Museum of African American History and Culture in, in D.C., the Smithsonian, mm -hmm. uh, mightily impressive uh, organization. Not that he's working with us yet. But you know, we would love to have that level of expertise, that level of, of impact. Uh, we need it. You know, when I went to the uh, museum, to the Smithsonian, uh, it was a very small portion of it was dedicated to black theater, black film, black television, black performance art, um, the performing arts. So, so 
because it really is the carrier of uh, the delivery system of our collective history is our culture. Uh, we really need to enshrine it, to institutionalize it, uh, to, to give it the kind of display that it needs so that, you know, so that you could really inspire a whole new generation. How do we pass this information on from one generation to the next? Uh, I, I don't think that it's limited to the four walls of a museum, the bricks and mortars. I think that it should be a course of study. I mean, at some point there should be advanced study in black art, black culture uh, that you could get if you have uh, your degree at Northwestern or University of Chicago, Harvard, whatever, and you want advanced studies in this particular uh, contribution that we have made as a people, you should be able to get that at AMPA. And you should be the one who teaches that. You were a teacher, and uh, why not? You, I mean, we need it. We got to have it. It couldn't have come in a more interesting, crazy, scary time in our world. When do you envision doors will be open? Well, our goal is to open it. Uh, you know, this is December of 2020. Uh, I would love to see the doors open wide in this fall, let's say Labor Day of 2022. Fingers crossed. Absolutely. That's, what, that's what we're shooting for. <laughs> you are a busy actor. You're doing everything. I, I mean, I know your work. I, like, you're everywhere. How do you sleep? You, you're blacklist, billions, trouble water. When, when, when do you take a break? You, you're like winning. You're the epic of the black man winning that we need. We need this image. You don't know, you do know. We need this image of the black man winning and you are winning. Thank you. I I, uh, I will let Hollywood know that I'm winning. They, they seem to think that they've got the upper head. <laughs> but, but that said, uh, you know, I'm a guy who, as for Chicago, and you know, I, I believe that motto, the city that works, you know what I mean? And, uh, <laughs> I also went to the seminary uh, there as a high school student, and our motto there was ora et labora, which means work and, and prayer, pray and work, prayer and labor. And so, uh, you know, I, 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 I probably should do more of the, of the former, <laughs> the praying, but, but work in this industry is really my way of praying. It's really, to some extent, my form of meditation. It's my uh, release. It's the way that I give honor, you know, to the Almighty. You know, I think you know. It says, uh, "Sing a new song unto the Lord," you know, and and so this is my way of singing, and uh, and making a joyful noise is through the work and trying to present uh, images uh, to represent characters uh, that tell a fuller story. It's not that you know, even this character that I play in troubled waters, you know, Ron Waters is troubled. He's not, he's not exactly uh, somebody that is a role model, but he is a fully dimensionalized man. And I think that more than anything, that's something that we may be missing. I think sometimes you have, you know, we play completely one side of it, some depraved, maniac, horrible, monstrous person. And then you've got these almost superhero-like, uh, overly virtuous, not very realistic, people. Most of us are somewhere in between on that spectrum. And, uh, you know, I think my particular uh, interest is, is in playing those kinds of characters and, and, uh, and revealing that aspect of, of our side, of that side of us to the world. So it's, uh, I don't have time to rest. <laughs> I know. I, and I, I just, you keep going. You, and we need that. We need those images. And you're super diverse in the characters that you play. Trouble Waters, how did you come about to making this, you know, producing it? What was, what was your intent behind it? Is Richard Pryor? He's a Richard Pryor type guy. You know, I think uh, even more, you know, I was looking at the, was looking at uh, Chappelle's Unhinged. Yeah. You know, set, very interesting, uh, gripping, compelling, fascinating. And, uh, and, you know, we did Troubled Waters a few years back now. Mm -hmm. But just to see how many parallels, even more than Richard Pryor, I think that Ron Waters is kind of, you know, is a thinking man like Pryor, but also like Chappelle, who's not up there telling jokes, you know, is really sort of relaying 
in real time what's going on in his life. It's, it's, it's a fascinating character, but I didn't um, invent it. It was really the story of a guy that's invented out of whole cloth. Uh, John Edwards and a guy named Danny Green uh, came up with it. They actually saw me in a conversation with somebody. And they, uh, you know, a lot of times you're trying to, people think that I'm, you know, I'm, I'm sort of a well-spoken guy from the South Side of Chicago. People frequently mistake, you know, my education or something with having been born with a silver spoon. But I'm from the streets of South Shore. You know, I grew up literally playing in the alley uh, <laughs> every day, <laughs> all day, all night. Those were the good days. Those were the good days. So far, really. coming through clean alleys. You could play hockey. Yep. Play basketball. Yep. We did it all. Uh, we played all of those sports back there and, and so forth. But, uh, you know, I'm from what we call the rough and tumble. And so they saw me in a moment uh, where I was talking to somebody, a producer, I think, who was getting in the way of, uh, of a certain check because they were off schedule. They didn't get the filming and I'd been on set all day and hadn't worked. So it must be like three o'clock in the afternoon. I've been there since six o'clock in the morning. I hadn't worked at all. <laughs> and, uh, and that's a waste of my time. Uh, you know, they, they pay for my time and, and all of that, but you know, I, I'm not paid to waste my time. And I wasn't supposed to work the next day but, uh, but because they were inefficient, you know, I, I uh, was prevented or they were trying to prevent me from doing this other job that I had arranged for myself. And so they saw a side of me that, uh, that they wanted to put into a film. And so that, so there was a lot of fun. I got, I, you know, Ron Waters is a sophisticated guy, but he's, he's also got an edge to him. And, and that was uh, a lot of fun to play. So translation, they were trying to stop your other check, the other bag, and you politely showed them the south side of Chicago. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> that came out so loud. <laughs> so, so much is happening in our world. So much is happening in the south side of Chicago. What advice would you give to those who's on the far front, who's out here trying to make a difference and not feeling like anything is changing? Being that you're from the south side of Chicago, from South Shore, what advice would you give young black men, young black women who are trying to really make an impact? Well, I think the, the first thing I would tell them is that, you know, that uh, I'm reminded of, of what it was that rules of Roosevelt said, which is, you know, the only thing to fear is fear itself. And that there's, you know, I remember, uh, it must have been LeBron James, uh, you know, there's another unfortunate shooting or something. He said that black people are terrified, but he wasn't speaking for me. And, and, I, and I don't think that, uh, you know, while we are concerned, of course, while I'm concerned and think that there's a lot of room for improvement with law enforcement, uh, relationships with the communities and all of these things. Uh, you mean, I'm not terrified. We're clothed in tremendous power as a people. I think one of the things that Chappelle did that I was uh, extremely inspired by is he, and he called up Netflix and said, get my show off of, your, off of your channel unless you pay me. That's power. And he walked in it. You know what I mean? We, we walk in our power all the time, you know, and, and, uh, and I see people accomplishing tremendous things, what you're doing with your platform, with, with a lot of people, you know, people creating institutions just about every day, black women, at least for a little while there, I don't know about the numbers now, but are the fastest growing demographic of entrepreneurs in the country. They are the best educated demographic of, of citizens in the United States are black women. That's an amazing story of success. And, and the, just to tell you what, what it is that we could do, that those messages do go through. Uh, sometimes it, it, it takes a little while for people to get the message, to get the memo, so to speak, and to walk in the potential and the actualization of, of all of their gifts, but the, they're there for the taking. And so I say, know that you have great power and that you could do, there's nothing on the books uh, that is preventing you from exercising it. There's no law that is preventing you from going out and doing precisely what it is that you want to do. If nobody's exactly, you know, paving the road with 
with rose petals uh, for you to, to go in and take over. Uh, build your own road. You know what I mean? Um, make your own way. We have a, a saying in the church, you know, it goes back a long way about making a way out of no way. Uh, you know, that, that, that wonderful quote, I think it's in Isaiah, it says, uh, behold, I will do a new thing. Even now it shall spring forth. Will you not know it? I will make rivers in the desert and a way in the wilderness, I think it says. So, and, and that's true. Will you not know it? Will you not see it? It's right here. I'm doing it. Behold, here it is. And, and, and that, I think, is the specific uh, quote that I would use in every case for us. So that's what I want the people on the South Side to know. Is there's nothing preventing you from doing precisely what it is that you want and all of it. What is next for you? You're doing everything. <laughs> what, what, what's, what's the next upcoming project that you can share with us that you are doing to make an impact in this world as you are someone we need to know? I mean, the museum and the art, performing arts theater itself, I was somewhat in tears when I read the, um, you know, the Tribune article. But I'm like, we need that. We absolutely need it. I'm from Inglewood. I know exactly what you mean when people think you're a certain way because you went to a school or went to DePaul University. So they say, oh, you're not from Inglewood. But that to, to see these positive images and bring back that community revitalization and commercial revitalization that you're doing, uh, what's next? What, what else are you doing? Well, I mean, are you about to like invent something? What's next? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've got all kinds of, uh, of, of dreams, plans. You know, unfortunately, I, I'm grateful that I have so many great partners. Steve Harris, who is my uh, partner in Exponent Media Group. We're developing projects now um, for feature films and, and, and limited series. Just trying to, you know, get in the door. And if we, as I say, if we can't, if we don't get an invite through the door, we're building our own. We're trying to figure out ways to distribute, uh, to uh, develop, uh, to, to bring people uh, from outside, inside, you know. So we, I got entire teams of people and I'm very grateful to them because I can do none of it alone. And it's going to take a collective effort. Uh, but the great thing about it is that, in, it, you know, I'm not really, just to be very clear with Sean, I'm not doing it for anybody's benefit, really, except for my own. Right. It just so happens, you know, I want to see the museum. I want to be able to have a resource that I, can, that I know where I could go to. I want to have a stage where I can put things on or be on it, uh, you know, and, and, and so forth. And so because of that, because it's good for one, uh, it, it, it could be good for us all. Um, what is it? All for one and one for all. And I, and I, and I think that that kind of, uh, if you will, selfish collectivism. <laughs> for us, by us. Who, that, who, what is that? Yes. For us, by us. For me, by me. One, what's good for me is good for the whole because I am a part of that. I come from out of that and, uh, and vice versa. And so this is really just a way of, uh, you know, of keeping it going. Uh, people inspired me, people taught me, people gave me uh, advice, uh, leg up, um, counsel. And so this is just a way of, as I, as I say, institutionalizing that. But yeah, that, I've got so many more stories to tell. I, if I lived five lifetimes, I wouldn't be able to tell them all because there's, there's so many and so many worthy of being told. I'm sick of the same old uh, drumbeat of doom, of, of, of being traumatized, of, you know, I, yeah, we've seen that. Call it poverty porn. Right. I, I'm the person who tells the good news, the good news, all poverty porn, changing it up. Right. We're telling a different story. Our story that's been happening, but you all wouldn't cover, mainstream would cover, absolutely. Right. When you're right. in Chicago, I know you are so busy. When you're in Chicago, what do you like to do? What do you do? What do you, what do you come to do? What are your, what's your favorite restaurant? What, what's the thing that you love to do when you're at home? Well, I, you know, I have, as you, I have a lot of friends and family there. I haven't grown up there. You know, I, I could never in one visit really see all of the people that I would want to or that, uh, you know, sometimes ask to, for me to stop by and visit. But, you know, I stop. Of course, my sister is still there. Uh, she's got two daughters who are doing great. One is a teacher. Um, 
very proud of her. Went to Northwestern like I did, just dropping that in there. <laughs> And my other one, very proud of her too. She's getting her master's degree. She went to Western Illinois and, and, and so forth, but they're both doing great. So I see them, that's my first stop. Uh, I have a lot of friends in Bronzeville. Uh, Alderman Sophia Dorsey King is my dear friend. Anita, uh, Dr. Anita Blanchard Nesbitt, Nesbitt is, a, is a dear friend. So I normally will see them. I have fraternity brothers and stuff there. So frequently I go up to Evanston uh, because that's where the chapter that I joined. But, you know, I've got a lot of um, friends throughout the city. You know, my old favorite restaurant used to be a place called Helen's Restaurant. And it was on 79th and, and Ridgeland. Uh, and it's no longer here. Helen passed away, I'm afraid to say. Uh, loved, loved her. BJ's Cafe is a place I go. I like it uh, a lot. Um, uh, Doc's Fish, you know, I'm, I'm <laughs> over there. <laughs> Are you name Doc's Is Doc's Fish still open? Yeah, yeah, there's one on 87th, it is. Yeah. Uh, in that little mall right off of the, uh, off of 9094. Uh, so, yeah, that one is open. At least it was uh, when the last time I was there. I haven't been in a while. Nobody could travel anywhere. But uh, I did pass through Chicago, uh, uh, not too long ago, and went to a Portillo's, the one on North Avenue. Uh, of course, yeah. Yep. Uh, there is RPM Steakhouse is a fantastic place. To Absolutely. Yep. <laughs> you name you now you name some goodies, some goodies that yeah. I I'm remembering. I mean, all of them are good, but yeah, absolutely. Portillo's has since expanded. Yeah. That's uh, yeah, that's your Chicago guy. Yeah, that that I am. And last question, how are you, what, like with everything, with the pandemic, how are you staying sane? What, you already mentioned that you're spiritual and you're almost about to be a father. I threw that in there because you said seminary. But how are you, how are you staying grounded with everything with the pandemic and how are you staying sane? So many of us, I often ask, you know, a lot of people I interview, how are you staying at one with yourself? And yeah. Well, you know, I'm back at work, you know, thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Round so, of applause. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> you got me today because I I, uh, I was just doing a bunch of uh, uh, conference calls and, and Zoom meetings and all, which is what everybody's done. I have directed a Zoom play, which is called Mercy. Mm -hmm. That'll be at the North Light, uh, on the North Light Theater Company's website on uh, Sunday, December, I think that's the 13th. It's by a young graduate out of Northwestern. Name is Felicia Odu. She's a genius. Um, so I, 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 I've done stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I, I'm going to show you my piano over here. I play. I wow. in my, in my in my filthy cluttered table, but uh, I, I I try to play uh, piano uh, every day if I can. It helps me meditate. It kind of is is a way for me to relax and to you know get my mind off of uh, off the other things. So that's how, you know, I'm, I'm married. My wife keeps me uh, sane and grounded. She's uh, starting a business of her own right now. And, um, and so, yeah, it's, it's great. I have a lot of, a big network. And, I, you know, to some extent, as I say, I'm back at work and all of that, but I've kind of gotten used to this uh, new normal. New normal. Uh, it, it's not so bad, you know, at least not right now. It's not so bad. This Zoom play. That is girl breaking, like, yeah, wow, yeah, it's everything a very, on it's a, yes, everything on play. Like, like, and you know, look, I think we stepped it up a little bit. It's not your normal Zoom play, we sort of approached it like, uh, like a movie almost. You know, I think that's going to be happening more and more. Um, these Zoom plays for theater companies, probably. I think so, you're probably yeah. right. Yeah. So Trouble Waters is airing December 10th, this coming yeah. December 10th on BET Plus. We'll make sure we'll check it out. Yes. And uh, Mercy on December 13th. And where is that? You said it's streaming. It was going to be on their web. What website? Uh, I think it's just, I think it's North Light Theater. North Light Theater. That's final yeah. thoughts. Uh, love Inglewood, where you're from. I taught school uh, in Inglewood. I know. Yeah, at Bass Elementary School. I think it's I think it's a magnet school now or something mm -hmm. like that. You're absolutely right. It wasn't when I was there, but, <laughs> but we had some tremendous talent there. One of my uh, former students is an actor. His name is Ransford Ofe. 
I think he uh, might be back in Chicago. I think he moved back. He was in Atlanta for a while. Uh, I was so proud. It was right across the street from Ogden Park. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I want to put up, so, you know, a big shout out to Inglewood. It's, it's a wonderful community. And, uh, and, you know, maybe we'll have a satellite of the African American Museum uh, in Inglewood. Prayers. We need. I promote all things good in Inglewood. Yep. Speak that into existence. I know Rita Lewis will love that. I know we all would. We need that. We've got to have it in Inglewood. So I appreciate that. Yes. Yes. It's a long time coming. Like I said, it's uh, overdue. You, there's, there's no such thing as too much attention uh, or, or, you know, in the black community. Absolutely. Can't be, you know, we're still making up for the deficit. So. Absolutely. Thank you, Harry Lennox. I appreciate it. I'm going to let you go. Enjoy the rest of your day and stay safe. Thank you, Rashonda. Great to talk to you. I'd love to come back sometime. Absolutely. And I would love to talk to the folks at the museum and, you know, your partners to go deeper into, you know, the great things you're yeah. doing with the Museum and Arts for Arts Theater. Great. Well, you, you, uh, I'm happy to set up an introduction. My, uh, uh, my partner, so to speak, not in crime, but in culture, is, uh, is a certain Tehran Patton. Okay. She's the executive director of AMPA. But if you go to ampamuseum.org, you know, there's a lot more information. A-A-M-P-A -A uh, museum.org. It's a lot of uh, great information up there. I will definitely check it out. Thank you so much. Thank Have you for having me. And talk to you soon. Thank you.